The mountains of western Maine, deep, dense, and wild, marked by high peaks and clear mountain streams. And for 200 years, Oxford County has also been famous for what the landscape conceals, hidden deep underground, pockets of rainbow-colored gemstones. This is one of the best places in North America to find gemstones. That's what lured Carl Francis, former head curator at Harvard's Mineralogical Museum up to this little town in Maine. Francis heads a team of international experts who have helped launch the new Maine Mineral and Gem Museum. We often say that all of those years at Harvard were just his training to work here. The very signature. Barbara Barrett is director of the museum, which concentrates on the dazzling gemstones found in the region. But the museum also ventures further afield. All right, would you like to hold a piece of the moon? It's the best offer I've had today. All right, well, there you go. Wow. The museum features a world-class collection of meteorites, including the five largest pieces of the moon found on Earth. We literally have more of the moon than all the natural history museums in the world combined. I'm smiling underneath my mask. This is so cool. Visitors can even touch a piece of Mars. This chunk landed here on Earth after an asteroid collided with the red planet. And I'm holding a piece of another part of the solar system. What, what a thrill. What a privilege. Hey. You want to give us a hand? Yeah. Visitors are invited to plunge into interactive exhibits. <laughs> and stories of legendary local miners provide a thematic through line. This is the Param Store exhibit. One exhibit, a recreation of Param Store in nearby West Paris. For 90 years until its closing in 2009, Param's was a mecca for mineral and gem hunters. Special attention is given to Frank Param and his collection of minerals and gems. In fact, it's almost embarrassing to go there because they treat me like I wasn't just a guy off the street. He may be enshrined, but he's still in the thick of it. We find Frank Parham in his happy place, busting up rock in the Weissenden Quarry, in hopes of finding something unusual. These days, though, Parham leaves the heavy lifting to others. Right about there. And they will drill holes wherever I tell them. You see, Frank Parham is known as the Pocket Fairy, his instinct for finding pockets of gemstones, the stuff of legends. In 1972, he hit the mother load, nearly two tons of gem tourmaline in a single pocket. The new tourmaline gem find at Nuri is the most fantastic find which has been uncovered in North or South America in the last 50 years. Frank is a truly amazing person. He is a remarkable guy and somebody everybody looks up to and goes to for information. Three decades ago, Chronicle visited Frank Parham at his junkyard and garage. The main reason I make my livelihood with automobiles is, is that it's steady. But this humble rock hound has always commanded the respect of professional mineralogists. In fact, the Smithsonian named a mineral after him, Paramite. My favorite expression is that and 52 cents will get you a cup of coffee. Mineral pocket is These days, Frank keeps a small collection in his basement for school groups. Kids love this. They'll pretty much wear the, the thing out, you know, to see this. There are also several tons of material out back in trailers, but his most valuable pieces will live forever at the Maine Mineral and Gem Museum taking their rightful place in this world-class museum alongside priceless cut gems and distinguished visitors from outer space. This is a place everybody's got to come and see in this little town in Maine, this beautiful town in Maine. The museum's meteorite collection sprang from the personal passion of founders Larry Stifler and Mary McFadden. Most were discovered by Bedouins in the deserts of Africa, largely because that's where meteorites are most visible. In fact, many Bedouins now pack, along with their tents and camel chow, portable X-ray diffractometers so they can analyze strange-looking rocks found in the desert. 
Up next, an immigrant writes his place in American history. But first, a successful Laotian restaurant in Bethel? No one is more surprised than its owner.